Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, and welcome to Getting the Right Shot. Uh, this looks to be much more popular than my last seminar, Getting the Wrong Shot, which did not go over very well. Um, anyway, I'd like to thank everybody here. I'd like to thank DP Review. I'd like to thank Samsung for having me here. I'd like to thank the online audience for watching. Uh, this is Getting the Right Shot, and in the interest of full disclosure, my wife took that photo, and I got that chair on Craigslist for free. So we're gonna talk about getting the right shot. Now, what is getting the right shot? What is the right shot? Does anybody have any idea? Honestly, it's an honest question. Like, what do you think the right shot is? The one that keep people keep looking at. That is absolutely correct. Thank you. <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> Um, getting the right shot, it, it, that is a part of it because the one that people keep looking at usually means there's something about it. There's something interesting. There's something that pulls you in. It's, it's different from everybody else's shot. There's a reason that you're fascinated with the shot. So that is definitely a component of it. I'm gonna talk about getting the right shot as content meets context. Now that sounds like really philosophical, right? It sounds like weird, like what is that? That sounds like too much information, right? But what it is, content meeting context, it's best told in an example. So the Pope was in New York, right? Two weeks ago, it was crazy, it's totally ridiculous. The Pope is in New York. So a friend of mine is like, I got a shot of the Pope. And I'm like, that's great, like what is it? And he's like, it's tight headshot. I shot it with a 400 as he drove by in the Pope mobile. Okay, I mean, it's great. Like, you should get a shot of the Pope, right? But that is not content meeting context. That's content, and that's great. The fantasy shot of the Pope for the first time in New York, for me, would be the Pope in front of a yellow cab with the Brooklyn Bridge behind him, right? That's probably never gonna happen, but weirder stuff has happened. Now, I did not get that shot, so you're not gonna see that. But <laughs> if it did happen, that would be content meeting context. You see what I mean? It's when you know somebody, you get a picture of somebody or something, and there's a reason for it. And you look at it, and just like you said, you look at it, and you know that's the Pope in New York. Like, you don't have to think, well, what is that? What is it? It's the Pope, it's the Brooklyn Bridge, it's New York. So, a lot of you probably don't know, or maybe you do, I shoot a lot of music. I'm, I'm what they call a wire service photographer. That's how I got started. As a matter of fact, today, actually today is my 10 year anniversary with Getty Images. So if Getty's watching out there, I'd like to thank Getty. It's awesome. So 10 years with Getty. So I shoot for Getty, I shoot for AP Images, and I have my own clients. Now what is a wire service photographer? That's somebody who gets assigned anything, basically. So what that means is I shoot music, I shoot celebrities, I shoot portraits, I shoot corporate stuff, I shoot automotive, I shoot behind the scenes. I shoot basically anything. And when you're a wire service photographer, you have to be good at basically anything because that's what your assignment is. So like if you shoot food, yes, I shoot food. I shot food for the Wall Street Journal. Some people only shoot food. And then there's like the guy who only shoots cold food. Like that, you know, it's like a specialty, it's crazy. Like I'm not that guy, it's cool, but I'm not that guy. But you have to be able to shoot everything well. So I shoot a lot of music. So content meeting context in music, what is that like? Well, I'll tell you. I was Prince's European tour photographer, Prince. Right, the purple rain, the purple guy, the little guy, you know, he's crazy, he's awesome. Prince, so what is it like to shoot Prince in concert? I'm gonna have you read this. <laughs> this is a thousand word essay. I, actually, I literally wrote this. This is real, this isn't fake. If you read it, it's kind of funny because I'm an amazing writer. Actually, I'm not, but it is kind of funny. So you're gonna read that, I'm gonna go get some coffee, I'll be back, I'm just kidding. This is boring, reading is boring. So if you want content meets context, you just show this. 
This is Prince. This is Prince in Paris. This is the opening show of his European tour. He hasn't been to Paris in a while. So you want the shot of Prince in Paris. So you don't want the tight headshot. You don't want him playing guitar really tight. You wanna show content meets context. You wanna show Prince in Paris. So how do you do that? It's actually easy. If you have unlimited access, it's kinda easy. So I'm actually behind the stage shooting this. And Prince goes out, there's a long runway, he goes out and he's playing. Then he turns around, I'm shooting with the 17, it's really wide, the spotlight comes on. And there's Prince, there's the Stadium of France or the Stade de France, or I don't speak French so I don't know, but something like that, behind him. And you can read on the monitor, it's like, they were dancing and singing and moving to the grooving and just when it hit me, play that funky music, right? yeah exactly. So that's content meeting context in concert photography. So I shoot a lot of music. So we're gonna go through some print shots right now because <laughs> it's prints, right? We wanna see prints. When you shoot prints, he does everything well. Okay, so prints dances, right? He sings, he plays everything. So you have to get all those things because it's prints. So this is a shot, this is three shots actually of prints dancing. You don't even need to know that it's Prince. You look at it and you're like, that's Prince. It's, it's not like Van Halen or something. You just know from how he's dancing and moving, you know that that's Prince. You can feel the energy. This is a shot of Prince. It's an interesting little story. This is a shot of Prince playing guitar. We know he's a great guitar player. I've shot m most musicians that you can think of. I think he's the best guitar player I've ever seen because day in and day out, he just kills it like every night. And you're just like, man, he's amazing. And one day I asked him, I was like, it looks so easy. Like it looks so easy. And he's like, that's because when I was a kid, I would play till my fingers bled in my bedroom like 14 hours a day. And I'm like, oh. So if you wanna play like Prince, that's what it takes. It's, it's effort, you have to put in the work. So this picture, this is in Rotterdam. This is during a show. It's at a quiet point, I don't remember the song. And he's playing, you know, and he kind of opens his eyes a little bit and looks at me. And right when I'm about to take the photo, he takes the guitar and moves it in front of the mic stand. Because he's genius, because he knows. He's like, in his mind, I think, this is like Prince's mind, he's like, this is a good photo. So he does this, and he knows, he literally knows that. And other musicians, they, they're not aware and he's incredibly aware of stuff like that. So he did that a lot on the tour. He would do things like that. He would put things in front of the mic. He would move away from the mic. Instead of holding the, the mic in front of his mouth and eating it like so many musicians, he would do it and then he would look at me for the shot and then he would put it back because he knows about stuff like that. This is another shot of Prince playing guitar. So he can shred like Jimi Hendrix. He can play soft like Clapton. He can play almost anything. This is actually at about a 30th of a second and they were strobing him with a strobe, like about once every half second or something. So I dragged the shutter like at a 30th, I caught the strobe and you get a little movement, you get a lot of action and it's like, it's him playing, it's really interesting. This is another epic guitar shot. So it's like him on the backdrop also. So it's like double prints for your money, it's awesome. Now he's playing a Fender Strat here, I think. I'm not a guitar player, but I think it's a Fender Strat. He usually doesn't play a Fender Strat, but he plays, he's got so many guitars, he can, he literally can play one every song. It's pretty cool. This is a shot of Prince playing piano. So he, like I said, he can play every instrument. So you need to get shots of him doing everything because he does everything well. It looks like a studio shot, some dry ice, some lighting, you know. This is on stage, shot with like a 300 or something right in the middle of Purple Rain. So he's literally playing piano for Purple Rain. This is what I call his James Brown moment, right? So Prince, you know, he can channel James Brown. He can do everything. So this is like James Brown, you know, like when James Brown would play and he'd be singing and then he'd like walk off and they put the cape on him and he's like, no, no, I'm back, you know, and he would do that. This is what that is to me. This is where you can see like the lineage of, of what he does. He can dance. He can sing, 
It's totally amazing. It's kind of a retrospective moment right here. This is an interesting shot. This is him in Paris again. And when I got this and looked at it on my computer, I was like, I totally nailed it. I was like, yes. Because he walked out, the spotlight came on, and he's just like, yeah, you know? And I was like, yes, it's awesome. So when I go back to his dressing room to show him these pictures, because that's what happens when you shoot for prints. You shoot the whole show. So I would go back to the dressing room and edit 7,000 frames down to about 120, and then Prince would come back to the dressing room, and he would take a shower and come out to look at the photos. And you're like, oh, Prince, right? You're thinking, he just did a three-hour show, two encores, he's gonna come out like in a sweatsuit, you know, or something like that. No, it's Prince. He comes out like in a gold flannel shirt, you know, in six-inch heels. <laughs> like, <laughs> there is no sweatsuit, you know? That's what he is. So he comes out and he looks at this image, and he's like, that's hot. We can't use it. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. He's like, there's empty seats. And I said, yeah, but the, that's behind the stage. Like, they can't sell those seats. He's like, it doesn't matter. All people are going to think is that people didn't come to my show. And I was like, wow. Wow, he's smart. It's too bad, though, because... That's a good shot, but I wanted to put that in there to illustrate that he knows what's going on. So is that the right shot? Not for Prince. This is Prince playing his favorite guitar. Anybody play guitar in here? Anybody at all? So this is a Honer guitar, right? Pr Prince plays a Honer guitar. Honer makes harmonicas. He's had this guitar for a very long time. I was told his father gave it to him. I don't really know. He told me it's been rebuilt like five or six times because it's old and he loves this guitar. And the interesting thing about this guitar is since he's a perfectionist, he plays it because he likes the sound. It may not be flashy, it's not what you think, you know, but he loves this guitar. But he does weird stuff during the show, like in the middle of a song, he will play a chord, he will take the guitar off and throw it into the audience just in one mo motion. And the first time he did it was in Poland, and I was like, like, that's crazy. And then we go back to the dressing room, and he's like, did you get that guitar? Because that's how Prince talks, he's, he like, talks like this. He's like, did you get that guitar in the air? And I was like, yeah. And he looked at me and he was like, and that's when I knew, I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> so he, he just throws it, he's like, He's like way over here somewhere. That's a roadie right here, this guy. And he actually catches the guitar most of the time. And if he doesn't, it gets rebuilt. That's how it gets rebuilt. So here's some more print shots. This is showing the passion and the energy. You're just trying to show what it's like. So my goal when shooting a concert is to put you in the concert. Like even if you weren't there, I want you to be like, I saw Prince, I know what it's like. So you look at this and it's just like, it's the best show you'll ever see. So I'm trying to put you in the concert rather than get a nice photo. There's a difference between making a photo and getting a photo. So I'm trying to make a photo here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get some tension. You know, like what's going on? Some tension over here, like what's happening? So you gotta look for those moments and you gotta be prepared and you gotta be a perfectionist just like Prince, you gotta, you gotta always be on. You can't be sitting there looking at your camera, figuring out your settings, you gotta know what's going on. This is what I call some kind of blue, if anybody's a jazz fan. Just Prince in a quiet moment. Did you know that's what they were saying? <laughs> like, I was a huge Prince fan since I was a kid, but I, I never really knew that that's what they were saying in Let's Go Crazy. That's what they're saying, apparently. Again, this iconic Prince shot. You can't see his face, but you know it's Prince because nobody else does like this stuff, basically. But I shoot other people. Enough Prince. So I shoot other people. This is Jay-Z at Madison Square Garden. Jay's a really quiet guy. He seems like a really quiet guy. You know, he's just like, yeah, man. So, you know. And then he gets on stage and he just explodes. Like he's got incredible charisma. It's a great show if you ever see Jay-Z. Kanye West, our next president. This is Kanye. 
He's, he's a great performer. I'm not gonna say anything bad about Kanye. He's a great performer, interesting guy. Jay-Z and Kanye on the same stage? Pretty good. Then we got Lenny Kravitz. Like I said, I shoot a lot of music. We're gonna get into some other stuff later. Lenny Kravitz in New York. Again, a guy I thought, yeah, I like him, he's pretty good. But mostly because I remember that song, Are You Gonna Go My Way, right? With the crazy female drummer with the glasses, you know? And she's like, that's what I remember. Unfortunately, she was not there for this show. Uh, but it was a good show. Anybody know who this is? It's Alabama Shakes, right? So if you don't know this band, if you like music, her name is Brittany. She's the lead singer and guitarist, and I'm telling you, she's awesome. She's awesome. Great music, Alabama Shakes. This is the view I get at most concerts. <laughs> now, this is, this is because there was no pit. Like, I don't know if you know. Like, a pit is an area that's marked off, like, with a barricade for photographers. So, like, if this is the edge of the stage, we're standing like this. There's a, there's a gate behind us so people don't kill us, basically. And this, there was no pit at this concert. So this is the view I get most of the time. Now most people be like, oh, it's terrible, you know. But look, you're at the concert, you want a picture, it's good. It's too bad you don't have a Samsung camera and you're using a cell phone, but it's all good, you know, it's totally cool. But you can get a cool shot, even of this. And if you zoom in actually, it's actually totally sharp. <laughs> like actually, somebody actually got a good photo with a cell phone which is very cool. This is Bruce Springsteen at the concert for Obama at the inauguration. So I was lucky enough, my friend Kevin Mazur, who's amazing rock and roll photographer, he invited me to shoot with him. This is Bruce Springsteen back by like a 100 person choir singing, and these are sharpshooters up here waiting to kill me, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like it was very, it's kind of weird, honestly. But this was very cool because over about here, there's a, a 50 foot tower where all the other photographers are. So they're shooting from the side, which is great, like 100 photographers. So I was lucky I was in the middle on an 80 foot platform shooting it just like this. And we had Beyonce, we had U2, we had Bruce Springsteen, Pete Seeger, like we had everybody, it was amazing. And when I turned around from this and looked behind me, there's 750,000 people lining the reflecting pool. And it was at that moment, literally, where I was like, how did I get here? This is crazy. I never took a photography class. I never got a degree. As a matter of fact, when I first started working for Wire Image, which Getty Images bought later, I was homeless. I didn't have an apartment. I was kicked out of my apartment. I was living on the floor of my office. And it was winter, and it was really cold. And I had one of those little ceramic space heaters, you know, because there was no heat after five o'clock in my office. And I would fall asleep with that ceramic space heater by my head, and I would be like, oh man, wearing a coat, and I was freezing. And I was broke, and all I had was a camera. And one night I woke up and I was like, why does my hand hurt so bad? And I realized that my, my big metal watch had heated up so much that burned my wrist all the way around. So the point of that story is you can start anywhere. Like you can start at the bottom, but you have to work hard and you can get to the top or you can at least see the top, you know? But that's what it is. It's hard work. It's like Prince. Prince didn't become Prince because he's like, yeah, I practice a half hour a day. It's very cool, you know? Like you don't do that. You become Prince because you do what Prince does. This is what Prince does, sorry to go back to Prince, but this is what he does. After the show, after he takes a shower and comes out in his gold lame flannel shirt or one piece flannel jumpsuit that he zips up, like <laughs> I can't make this up, it's crazy. He comes out, he gets his whole band in the dressing room and he watches the show they just did the whole show on DVD. And I know that because I was invited in the second show. He's like, you wanna come watch the show? And I was like, yeah. Like, what does that mean, you know? And then we sat there and watched the whole show that I just shot. It was like, it was like Twilight Zone for photography. 
I could see myself. I was like, there I am, it's very cool. And then he would watch it, and when it got to a really good part, he would start dancing in the dressing room. I'm watching Prince dance, watching Prince dance in the dressing like room. It's, it's crazy stuff, I can't make it up. I wasn't allowed to shoot that, unfortunately, but I've got it all up here. So the point is, if you wanna be that good, you have to work that hard. Like he, he wants to fine, fine his bandmates when they miss a chord. He'll turn to them and be like, I should fine you, that was D flat. The first time he said it, I was like, that's hilarious. And he's like, and he looked at me, I was like, okay, he's totally serious. Glad I got that guitar flying through the air. So what, what better way to bring up the mood than Neil Diamond, right? Coming to America is Neil Diamond at the Barclays Center. This was shot with a Samsung NX1. And the cool thing about that is I was shooting for Neil Diamond. So when you're shooting for the artist, it's totally cool because you have all access. That means like I could follow him into the bathroom, you know? It's creepy, it could be creepy. But I could, I could probably do it, maybe. I could probably do it. But I shot this with an NX1, and because I'm shooting for the artist, I've gotta get approvals before I send this stuff out. The cool thing was, I created a wireless hotspot with my phone. I emailed this to his manager while the show was going on. She approved it. I sent the image out before the concert was over. And you might think, well, Neil Diamond, like, is he really that big of a draw? I don't know, but it was in People Magazine the next day. So, speed kills, you know, it's great. Now we're gonna go to some portrait work. This is some girl. <laughs> so, no, it's Taylor Swift is who it is. This was a little earlier in her career. This is a 30 second setup. This is 30 seconds. It's a backdrop, it was one light. And I was like, Taylor, let's do a quick portrait. She's like, okay, that's it. It's simple, it's simple. Sometimes simple is good. This is Chris Hemsworth, right? This is Thor, or Thor 2. It's the same guy. <laughs> this is Thor. This is the usual assignment that I get. Hey, do you wanna shoot Chris Hemsworth tomorrow, do a portrait? Sure, okay. You've got 15 minutes, it'll be in a hotel lobby. Okay. That really means you've got one minute. Everybody's gonna show up pissed off you may not even get the shot. That's what it means. And they don't know anything about it. That's usually my assignment, and that's what I like, because that's when I can see if I'm good or not. If I'm not good, I get a crappy shot, or maybe nothing at all. If I'm good, I can get something good. So, he had just flown in from Australia, which is like a, a 64 hour flight or something like that. <laughs> but on top of that, he had just had twin boys, I think four weeks before. So he hadn't slept for four weeks, basically. Then he takes this flight, then he goes directly to the Today Show, then he goes to Good Morning America, then he comes to me. So he hasn't slept, I think he said 28 hours. And the manager's like, he hasn't slept in 28 hours, he's just really tired. And I said, okay. She goes, you got 15 minutes. I said, you know what, he's really tired? She goes, yeah. I said, okay. I'm gonna do four setups in five minutes. And she's like, <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. I said, okay, I'll do it in four minutes, how about that? And she's just like, okay, whatever. He comes in, and the thing you have to do is be incessantly positive. You just have to be positive. He walks in, and honestly, he looked like crap. Like, I don't mean anything by that, Chris, but dude, you retired, it's cool. But he walked in, and I was like, man, they're running you ragged, Chris. It's crazy, good to see you again. I'd never met him. <laughs> that's, that's a trick I do, that's something I have to use. Because if I'm like, good to see you again, you're like, oh, good to see you. What are you gonna be like? I've never seen you before in my life, you're a jerk. Like, you're not gonna say that. So I'm just like, good to see you again. He's like, oh man, good to see you too. I'm like, how are your kids? It's crazy having twins, right? And he's like, it's totally crazy, but they're amazing. And I'm like, that's cool. Why? Because I did my research. I knew that he just had twins. I knew that. I knew their names. And I was like, you know, I don't remember their names right now, but I was like, oh, you know, how's blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, it's crazy, it's ridiculous. And I'm like, great. 
Here's what we're gonna do. Since you're tired, we're gonna do four setups in five minutes and you can go to bed. He's like, great. So the first one on the couch, two lights, boom. Second one right behind the couch, one light. Now I don't have all these on here. Third one by the window and fourth one by a sliding door. We did it in four minutes. And I was like, thanks, remember me next time. Because then the publicist knows you're not full of it. Like you can get it and get something good. The cool thing with this was two weeks later, People Magazine named him sexiest man in the world. This didn't go in People, but it went everywhere else. So it was very cool. This is some garage band. This is U2. <laughs> no. This is U2. Again, concert for Obama. No time to make a portrait, right? There's no time. It was 15 degrees out. It was very cold. U2 is very cool, but I mean, it's 15 degrees. So there's a path from the green room that I, I swear is like a half mile long. It was ridiculous. But I wanted a portrait of these guys because everybody's going to get them on stage. That's fine. I wanted a portrait. That's what I do. I want to make a portrait. So I go to the green room, and when they have to go on stage, I walk with them. And I'm like, I was like, Bono, be really cool to do a portrait. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't think we have time. And I was like, how about we stop right here as like Lincoln Memorial in the background. It'd be really cool. And he's like, yeah, okay. So they pause. I take three frames. Then they literally walk directly on stage. And all I'm thinking is, I hope that is sharp. <laughs> That's like all I'm thinking. <laughs> Because like it's, it's not going to happen again. So, and it was. It was sharp. So, that's a quick portrait. And it's very cool. I was happy. I was excited. This is John Legend, right? Springfield, Ohio native. I'm from Ohio. So, right away, I knew he was from Springfield. And I was like, oh, my mom used to teach at the vocational school. And he's like, oh, Springfield JBS? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I used to teach music right down the street. So, you have to know a little bit about who you're shooting. It doesn't have to be a celebrity, it can be anybody. But if you know one thing about them and you can drop that little hint, immediately they feel like they know you, they're more comfortable, you can get them to open up. So this was on a, a 747, he's sitting in the pilot seat with the pilot's hat, which is totally illegal. <laughs> but that's fine, it's a cool picture. So we did this thing called the Grammy plane. He flew from New York to LA, performed a concert on the plane, and then did a press conference at the Grammys. So I was like, I gotta get a portrait of him because the concert pictures, I mean, he's performing on a plane. <laughs> like, like, how good could that really be? So I scout out the fact that the door is open to the cockpit because it's a charter plane. And I'm like, maybe we could do a picture in the, in the cockpit. Like, that would be great. So he walks by. Now, I've already put my fish eye on. I've already arranged my flash. Like, I've already tested light. I've already pre-done everything. So if it happens, I'm ready, because it may not happen. And it seems lucky, but you create your own luck. If you create your own luck, that's how you get pictures that are good. So as he walks by the cockpit, I'm like, <laughs> check it out, the cockpit. Have you ever been in the cockpit? He's like, no. And I was like, oh. And I walk in the cockpit, and I'm like, you should check it out. It's awesome. He comes in, and I'm like, you just sit in the pilot's seat. He was like, yeah. And then I take the pilot's hat off of the coat rack, and I was like, put this on. And he's like, he puts it on. I take one frame, and he goes, yeah, I can't do this. I said, no, that's okay. This People Magazine is like a half page the next day. It's good. Again, this is Prince. I wanted to do a portrait of Prince the whole tour. I don't think he likes to do portraits. I'm not sure. The manager's like, it's not gonna happen. This is the last show I did. This is, I think it's in Rotterdam. I scouted out a location, because that's what I do. I get, to the, uh, I get to the place and I was like, there's, like, there was nowhere to do anything cool. But there was a back stairway that led to the stage and I was like, oh, we could do it there. Because it's white, and I'll explain why. So I get down to the edge of the stage, the show's about to start, the roadie comes over and he's like, Prince wants you in his dressing room. And I'm like, he wants a portrait. I know that. And I have my on-camera flash in my pocket. Why? Because I'm thinking if it happens, I need to be ready. Nobody's gonna say, oh, he needs to go get his on-camera flash. <laughs> Nobody, it doesn't work like that. You have to be ready. So I walk up, Prince is like, you wanna do a portrait? We're in uh, Roberto Cavalli outfits. I don't even know what that means. I was like, that's amazing, that looks great. Let's do it here. 
It's a dark stairway with a red light that leads to the stage. And he looks at me and he goes, you really wanna do it here? I was like, yep. Take three frames, this is what I got. How I did it, the whole stairwell was white. Put my own camera flash on, I bounced it behind me at full power, manual, full power. It's a 12 foot softbox. So it lights up like this. After the show, he's like, any of those portraits come out? Because that's how he talks. And I was like, yes. And I showed him and he's like, that's awesome. Send that out right now. I want to put it on my blog. I was like, cool. Uh, this is Peyton Manning. So Peyton Manning, big football player, so he got traded to the Denver Broncos a couple years ago. Huge story. I'm at the Brooklyn Navy Yard shooting a behind the scenes. He was doing uh, some commercials for DirecTV. You probably remember some of those maybe. He like flew around like Tinkerbell or something. So I'm there and his publicist at, at like 8 a.m., she's like, yes, he just got traded, you know? And I was like, oh, that'd be so cool if he had his Broncos uniform here and she goes, Oh, he, he does, but we can't, he can't put it on. He has to wear like this neutral thing. And I was like, oh, it'd be so cool if we could do a portrait of that. And she's like, yeah, it's not gonna happen. I was like, yeah, but that'd be cool, wouldn't it? That was like at 8 a.m. By 6 p.m., I had a makeshift studio set up next door with four tungsten continuous lights that I borrowed. I paid off one of the lighting guys 20 bucks. I was like, can I borrow these? He's like, yeah, okay. I lit this backdrop, it was just a white psych. He walks in in this uniform, and I'm just like, this is gonna be good. And he's like, what are we doing, how long will it take? And I'm like, we're doing a front, a back, and a side, it'll take one minute. And he's like, he starts laughing, he's like, okay. Or he takes his phone out, and he's like, okay, go. And so I did it in 49 seconds. And he was like, never seen that before. <laughs> he was so excited, he did a shot with his brother too. I think that's framed in their house, literally. I think it is. This is, anybody know who this is? Yeah, all the women are like, Jason Derulo. <laughs> Jason Derulo, he's very charismatic. He's an awesome singer, right? This was taken in 30 seconds in a hallway. So I did 10 frames of him. This is an example of trying to get something out of somebody. So he's just about to go on and I'm giving him instruction. I've got two lights shooting up into the ceiling or something, something simple, it's gotta be fast. I'm giving him instruction, I'm like, give me your best like, hey, what's up, you know? And then I was like, give me like, Whoa, what are you talking about? So he's doing all these things and I'm just shooting him, trying to get something interesting. This is a thing I did for Comedy Central. I shot 22 portraits in 25 minutes and this is as they're walking on stage. That seems to be a theme, like as people are walking on stage. But often that's the only time you can get them. So I set up my stuff right there. They walk by and if they don't do the picture, they're like, that's kind of jerky, you know? So they, they did it. So I tried to get each of them one minute. I'm trying to pull something out of them and get something interesting. This is Alexa Chung. She's like a DJ. She's like an author. She's very cool. This is just to show that sometimes it's best just to keep it simple. This is like a shoot through umbrella in a 50-1-4. It's interesting though, it pulls me in. Robert Pattinson, same thing, interesting guy. Kelly Osborne, right? She was dead tired, she, she's super nice to work with, she's super friendly, but she was just not giving me anything. And I was like, come on Kelly, give me something. And she did this. And she's like, you're not gonna use that. And I was like, no. <laughs> so this is my grandpa. So like, why would I have a 94-year-old grandpa in my presentation? But you know what? Any 94-year-old grandpa shot is good, right? But a 94-year-old grandpa sitting on the tractor that he's owned for 55 years that he just had restored, content meeting context. That's what makes it interesting. This was shot on film. This is my wife, because I have to put my wife at a presentation. But this was shot with a Samsung NX500 with a 30F2, natural light. She's a great photographer in her own right. But the point of this is, those little cameras are so easy to use. Nobody pays attention to them. She's just on the swing at my parents' house, 
And I just have the camera and I'm just like taking pictures. And then she looks at me, I take it and that's it. These little mirrorless cameras are really changing the game for me. I use them all the time. I use them for my Getty assignments. I use them for AP. I file photos from the camera. It's a very interesting time with the mirrorless cameras. Naomi Campbell, walking in the Zach Posen show. This is the final, she walks in, in the end of every Zach Posen show. And with this, I was working for the designer and I was like, I wonder if I can shoot runway with the Samsung NX1. It's risky, it's risky, honestly, because if it doesn't work, like you're screwed. <laughs> you're just like, yeah, I was trying this new camera, I'm sorry, there's no pictures of your show. But this totally worked. And it was very cool, and again, I was able to send this for approval straight from the camera right when the show ended. Everybody else is going back to the subway to get their laptop, you know, and all that. I already sent it. My job is really hard, okay? I have to carry a lot of gear, heavy lenses. Who am I kidding? These are supermodels. <laughs> it's awesome, right? It's a Victoria's Secret show. I mean, I, like what else can you say? It's fun, it's interesting. I don't always shoot football, but when I do, I get somebody scoring a touchdown looking right at me. That's what I like. That's what I like. He's like, you, you getting this? Are you getting this? So that's, that's what I like. That's Tavon Austin. He now plays in the NFL. I don't always shoot polo, but when I do, I shoot Prince Harry playing polo in New York for the first time, and I, and I get the ball like right in the air. Now, I shoot a lot of car stuff. I'm gonna go through this kind of fast in case nobody's a car person. When I shoot car stuff, this is a Lotus 11. I wanna get the car in its element. Content context, right? This is an extremely fast aluminum lightweight car, four cylinder. It won everything when it came out. Nothing was even close. So I wanna show this in its element, which is going fast. So I'm panning. So any of you that shoot car photography, like the settings, it's probably, it's bright sunlight, so it's probably 50 ISO, maybe 100. Probably a 60th at like F14. Because you don't care about depth of field. You want it sharp, but you want it 60th, so you want to pan with the car. And if you mess around with those settings, you'll eventually get it right. Now, if it's a little darker, if it's a cloudy day, you might have to go up to 400 ISO, something like that. I shoot static cars also, static not moving. It's a Lexus LFA. I believe. This is a V10 supercar, it's very cool. When you shoot static cars, if you want them to look interesting, overcast days, you wanna wet the pavement and turn on the lights because it's sexy. It looks good. Dry pavement does not look sexy. This is a Range Rover. I shot an uh, article about Range Rover in the Hamptons, two days in the Hamptons. This is a car to car shoot. So I'm hanging out of the back tailgate of an identical one of these shooting this car, breaking all the traffic rules on the wrong lane, trying not to get killed. I would not recommend this, but it's a pretty cool picture. Uh, BMW 3.0, they call this the Batmobile. This is just an example of cropping. This is not a traditional motorsports crop, but to me it creates tension. You've got the car all the way up on the you know, top of the screen, it's clearly moving, it's drifting, something's going on, there's tension. I like it because it's just a little different. Here's a couple of shots from the Samsung NX500. I like this camera for automotive shots because I can tilt out the screen. I don't have to get on the ground, I can just put it like this. So that's what the first and last shot are. And the middle shot, it's all about ease of movement. I don't have to break my back anymore to do that stuff. This is another BMW, this is the same camera, NX500, and this is just showing the tones that this camera is capable of. It's more of a fine art shot. I shoot travel too. We'll go through some of these images. This is Paris, right? Content, content meets context. Paris with the Eiffel Tower, great. Paris with three couples together, and you can't see their faces, so you can sell it for stock. That's, that's the shot you want, right there. Lake Tahoe, right? Mountains in the lake, good. Mountains in the lake with the boat, better. Mountains in the lake with the boat and the paddle border, that's the trifecta, that's what you want. 
Again, this is, this is actually shot with a lens, baby. This isn't a cheap iPhone blur filter. This was actually shot with a lens. So it's a lens, baby, focusing on that first bus. Uh, and this is obviously in Queens. <laughs> anybody know where this is? Just a guess, anybody? Italy, very good, because it's a Fiat 500D. Content context, right? I'm not sure what's going on. This is another travel shot. This is in Agadir, Morocco. No, sorry, this is in Casablanca, which is really the Newark of Morocco. Like, that's not a negative thing. Like, well, I mean, it kind of is. But it's like a port town, and it, ask anybody from Morocco, and they'll be like, oh, Casablanca, ugh, it's terrible. But when you shoot travel, the cool thing is, even if they can't speak your language, if you walk up with a camera, and you're enthusiastic, and you're like, oh, yes, you know, can, can I take, you know, and you ask them, you're like, can I take a picture? Because, I mean, it's a guy with his meat, right? <laughs> Don't, yeah, delete that, no. <laughs> but what it is, it's, it's like a great portrait. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you what that actually is. But anyway, it's a great portrait. And the guy was so proud of it. And I was like, it's very cool. You want people in your travel shots and you want people from the area because it's interesting. This is Miami. It could be anywhere in the world. This is Greece. Again, a beach in a different way. You've got movement here. Your eyes going around. You're like, yes, this is interesting. There's something interesting about it. You want to lead the viewer's eye. This is California again. I couldn't figure out how to shoot these trees because they're like 180 feet tall. And all of a sudden I was like, just lay down. If something's not working, if you can't figure it out, change your perspective. You probably don't need to buy a new lens or buy a new camera or anything. Just change your perspective. Get down on the ground, get on a ladder. Do something like that. Icelandic ponies. I don't need to say anything else about that. This is Iceland, right? So Gildafoss, this is the uh, incredible waterfall in Iceland. That's amazing, right? One guy in the shot, even better. One guy with the North Face logo right there, licensing opportunity. <laughs> and this is the last shot of the presentation. This is Iceland again. A lot of my travel shots are about symmetry. I'm not sure why. I think it's because my life is kind of chaotic and when I travel, I seek out those symmetrical things. And also it's indicative of the journey. So the whole thing about a journey, like I'm on a journey. Next year, if I'm lucky enough to be here or somewhere else, I'm gonna be further along on the journey. So my whole advice is everybody's on a journey if you're in photography. So if you're the mom blogger, with the iPhone, that's totally awesome. If, you, if you're that person and you're like, I wanna shoot concert photography, you can do it. You just have to become that person. It's hard to describe. Like if you wanna shoot portraits, I wanted to shoot portraits, that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I wanna shoot portraits. Not even celebrity portraits, just portraits. Nobody's gonna walk up to you and be like, you can start shooting portraits now. <laughs> like it doesn't work like that. Like for me shooting a portrait, I was like, I tracked down Rihanna's manager. I'm like, yeah, when she's at this, e this event tonight, I wanna pull her off to the side and I wanna shoot a portrait. It'll take five minutes. And she's like, no. And I'm like, okay, 30 seconds. She's like, no. And I'm like, okay, as she's walking by, I'm gonna take a portrait. And she's like, okay. So I have my lights set up. As Rihanna walks by, I'm like, hey Rihanna, People Magazine wants you to do a portrait here. Is that cool? She's like, oh yeah, totally. I'm not saying you should always lie, <laughs> but you gotta do what you have to do. You know, you, you have to do that when you're starting out. So the point is about the journey, you gotta work hard. And if you wanna do portraits, do portraits. If you wanna do music photography, do music photography. You might not be shooting at Madison Square Garden, but you can get into your local venue and you can shoot some stuff. And that's, that's about all I have to say. So thank you very much for coming to Getting the Right Shot. 
I really appreciate it. Thank you.